Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and it's been a while since I've done my last movie review, which was the 2015 stop motion and CGI animated feature that's based on the book called The Little Prince, which also had the 1974 version that I've yet to check out. I know I've seen that movie a long time ago, and I still need to find the DVD, but otherwise I'll try to see if I can find something so maybe I'll be able to watch it. Which brings me a shock to me because on account of being so busy a lot lately, you know, having to deal with a lot of stuff because I had to sign up for a class, I just found out that just recently a wonderful comet actor as well as writer and director Gene Wilder has passed away at the age of 83 due to Alzheimer's disease. Yeah, it really shocked me right there because he's such a fun, talented actor who has done a lot of great films, a lot of funny comedies such as uh, the Mel Brooks films like The Producers, Blazing Saddles, and Young Frankenstein. Yeah, those were good films. And then he also did films with Richard Pryor, definitely uh, a comic pair. When they did films like Silver Streak, Stir Crazy, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, and to be fair, Another You, which was one of their weakest, because it doesn't hold a candle to the first three films, you know, which See No Evil, Hear No Evil being my favorite of them all, um, as well as Silver Streak and, and Stir Crazy, <laughs> of course. He also started writing and directing films, especially when he teamed up with his wife, Gilda Radner, who's a former uh, SNL um, cast member. When he did films like The Woman in Red and Haunted Honeymoon, yeah, those were good films, in my opinion. <laughs> and he has done a lot of work over the years before he retired and started to work on other books and everything. Yeah, until, and he has a wife too, another wife named Karen, and he has kids, and there you go. So, yeah, he was one legendary actor that sadly he will be missed. But the one film that he actually did the most that became everyone's favorite, and it's based on the book by Ron Dow, called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Now, no doubt about it, the main reason why Gene Wilder got the role was because he wanted to do that one scene, he didn't know at the time, of course, was when he wanted to do a scene where he comes out of the chocolate factory, you know, he's walking around very crippled, you know, he had a cane and he was limping, and then suddenly he fell onto the ground, did a somersault, and got up and it pleased everybody <laughs> because uh, in his reaction he says that he didn't know if they were even lying or not when they saw that scene yeah but um, this wasn't uh, Rondell's first choice when he wanted an actor to do the uh, the movie version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory yeah the first one to go because this is another reason why he totally disowned this movie. Uh, Rondell's real choice was a comedian, Spike Mulligan, which, you know, he was a, a British comedian who's been in several movies and, and other stuff, and he thought this would be the perfect choice for him to play Willy Wonka because he seemed like he has the style. Not only that, but even Peter Sellers actually begged for the role as well. Because at the time, he was doing the, the Pink Panther movies. But, I know, there were other actors too, especially the Monty Python cast. Wow, hard to believe. <laughs> but, eventually they went to Gene Wilder because of that particular scene alone. So, And that was his idea. If, if it wasn't for that scene alone, he wouldn't do it. And also, Rondell disliked the film because 
the fact that it was inferior to his book. You know, they had to do major changes with the story. While some of them remained the same, the rest of them have been ultimately changed. Because, well, you know, Hollywood doesn't translate very well with books. And, and there are times when they tend to improve better. So there you go. So that's why. But that is until we had the 2005 version, which Tim Burton did. And Johnny Depp took over the role for Willy Wonka, which... I know people have mixed feelings about this movie. And people felt the same way. But at least, um, for the most part, it did focus on the story. Because we know that Wong Dao wanted to focus on Charlie instead of just emphasizing on Willy Wonka. Because it's really his story. You know, Charlie Barkett. I mean, the idea about having to live with a poor family. He has a mother who's a widower. And he has grandparents uh, living together in one house. They were very poor, so they couldn't be able to find their lifelong dream until one day. And he was trying to find his best to find a golden ticket to enter the chocolate factory. But he has to bring one person, and that is Grandpa Joe. And that, that was a chance of his lifetime. So, so this is the movie about what was it like if... If you get one golden ticket that you find on a Wonka bar, you know, lots of candy around, and suddenly you get a chance of a lifetime by entering your pure imagination. Now, the film was originally released by Paramount Pictures, was co-produced with producer David L. Roper, who owns uh, Roper Pictures and uh, the Roper Company which at the time was owned by the Quaker Roads Company. That's um, a factory from Chicago. Yeah, best known for making all these uh, chocolate chewy bars and old cereals. Yeah, as well as uh, Quaker Oats uh, oatmeal. Well, they had to purchase uh, the rights to this movie, uh, as well as the, the book, because they were also preparing to create their their own Wonka bar yeah, as opposed to the film and the film was a modest success um, earning only four million out of its three million budget and apparently uh, Paramount lost the rights in 1977 due to the fact that Roper Pictures was being owned by Warner Communications yeah, which, is, which owns Warner Brothers and they took over um, the company from the Quaker Oats Company. And now Warner Brothers have purchased the rights to the film. So that explains it. Which is pretty rare too because um, just recently I, I found a 16mm print of the film that was sold on eBay. It's already been sold already. That actually had the Paramount logo intact. So that's really something. Because I would imagine having to see the film with the Paramount logo intact. But instead it's the Warner Brothers logo. And they've been plastering the logo ever since. So there you go. They did have a re-release uh, back in 1996 which actually earned $21 million. So yes, it was a huge hit. Highest grossing movie ever. Now when I first saw the movie at the age of 9, I didn't like it at first. Because... It's kind of hard to actually handle a film like this if you had to see children in danger. And while they are spoiled brats, no doubt about it, I didn't like to see the treatment of them, even if they deserved it. It's just, it's kind of hard. That's how I felt when I saw this movie. And, and the fact that Willy Wonka refused to help them, it just kind of ruins it. It really did. I, after seeing it, uh, the second time around because I gave it a second chance I really enjoyed it it got better to me as it went along and it and it continues to go on as years follow before the 2005 version came along so all it, all it matters though is it was fine 
I, I'll live with it. So there you go. But then when the 2005 version came along, that's when people started feeling very mixed on the film. But then at the same time, they did enjoy it because it did focus on the story. Yeah, for those who have read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you will know that's what it's supposed to be about. And there you go. But then they felt pretty mixed, mostly because of Johnny Depp's performance. I mean, the way he was uh, dressed and the way he looked in the film. Yeah. But when I first saw the film, I had mixed feelings myself. But seeing that uh, this is directed by Tim Burton and the fact that he wants Johnny Depp in the film, because after all, you know, they did work together as a team you know, since uh, Edward Scissorhands. You know, I gave it a chance. I would watch it just as long as it focuses on the source material. Then I really will enjoy it the most. Well, at first I did enjoy Johnny Depp's performance, but then having to see this movie back to back with the original, all I can say is I can't lie. Jay Wilder was the best Willy Wonka we ever had. So there's no doubt about it. But the, but the whole backlash between the 2005 version just really bothers me. And I still enjoy Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Both the movie and the book as well as the original. I don't like the fact that now they're just praising more on the 1971 version rather than this one. Because now I feel like, great. Now I'm going to go for that. But, you know, there are plenty of worse remakes and reboots out there that, you know, at least this one focuses on the source material that Ron Dow would have loved. So that's how I felt. But either way, I love the 1971 version as well as the 2005 version and, of course, the book. But that's all that matters because, you know, Ron Dow, um, even if he dislikes this movie, and even if Gene Wilder dislikes the 2005 version, then I respect their opinions. You know, to each their own. There you go. But I still enjoy them, so no matter what. So anyway, let's get to the film. It stars Gene Wilder, Jack Alverson, Peter Ostrom, Boy Kinner, Denise Nicholson, Leonard Stone, Julie Don Cole, Dodo Denny, Paris Femin, Ursula Rell, Michael Baldner, Diane Saul, Audrey Woods, Gunter Messner, and Peter Capel. Yep, it's written by Ron Dell, along with screenwriter David Susser, who is uncredited by the way, and it's directed by Mel Stewart. The movie began set in a modern European town where the kids who came after school went to a candy shop where they meet a candy man, you know, even singing the song, The Candy Man Can, The Candy Man Can, <laughs> yeah, because that's the song, which we meet a young boy named Charlie Bucket, who's played by Peter Ostrom, you know, who just stare at, at the candy man while singing the song. And suddenly, he wants up uh, working uh, with a news agent from a local newspaper where he gets his weekly paid so that way he can send uh, his family, who's very poor by the way, you know, he has a widow and mother and four grandparents who are sleeping, includes Grandpa Joe, who's played by Jack Alverson, a loaf of bread and any other kind of food. But then on his way home, he passes by a chocolate factory that's owned by Willy Wonka himself, you know, played by Gene Wilder. <laughs> Suddenly, he meets a mysterious man who told Charlie uh, out of the first poem from The Fairies that's written by William Eilenham, Nobody ever goes in and nobody ever goes out. Yeah, he didn't know what it meant at, at the time, but then he explains to Grandpa Joe about the mysterious man that he met, saying that Wonka had locked the factory 
because of his arch arrival named uh, Arthur Slugworth, who was played by Gunter Mesner. And he tells them that he hires some spies to actually steal Wonka's secret chocolate and candy recipes. So that way he'd be able to launch his competition between his factory. But Wonka had disappeared without a trace until three years later when he came back and began to sell more candy, which apparently his factory remains a mystery to everybody. All of a sudden, Wonka has announced to the entire world that he has hidden five golden tickets, that's right, inside each and every one of the Wonka bars. Anybody who finds those five golden tickets, at this rate just one, will be able to have a chance of a lifetime to enter a tour inside Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Which this will bring everybody a surprise. So, so far only four people around the world had gotten the go to ticket. One is a German boy who's a fat kid named Augustus Goop. The other one is a spoil rich brat who's British named Buka Salt. Next is an American girl who loves to chew bubble gum. She's really very good at that, named Violet Beauregard. And next is an American boy who is obsessed with television. Yeah, I can relate to that because, you know, I love to watch TV at that age. <laughs> Go figure. But hey, you know, I'm, I'm always into the into uh, movies and all this other stuff, so at least now you know. <laughs> but he loves to watch uh, Western movies because he always dresses up as a cowboy named Mike TV. That's right, that's his last name, TV. So each of the winners are about to go to the chocolate factory, but there's only one ticket left, and it was given to a millionaire in Paraguay, South America. Unfortunately, it turns out that the golden ticket was a fake, even though it was the last of all the golden tickets they ever had, and it was a shame for Charlie and his family not to go. But then, the next day, Charlie actually found some money from the gutter and went to a candy shop, you know, just to get some candy, such as the new Wonka bar that they came up for a specialty. And then he decided to buy another Wonka bar, but this time for Grandpa Joe. So at least he had enough money left. It turns out, by surprise, that he actually found the last and real golden ticket inside the chocolate bar. So he was like, wow. <laughs> After all this time, it's finally found. And he was so lucky, too. And by the way, the golden ticket actually says, and yes, I'm going to read it. I know for those who've seen the movie, we already know. The golden ticket reads, Wonka's golden ticket... Greetings to you, the lucky finder of this golden ticket from Mr. Willy Wonka. Present this ticket at the factory gates at 10 o'clock in the morning of the first day of October, which is October 1st. And do not be late. You may bring only one member of your family and only one, but no one else. In your wildest dreams, you cannot imagine the marvelous surprises that awaits you. That's all it says on the golden ticket. On October 1st, Charlie Bucket and Grandpa Joe had stayed in line along with a crowd of people, including the four winners who brought in their family along. Yeah, only one person, by the way to enter Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. And this is where we get the scene where Willy Wonka appears as a crippled. He was limping and then suddenly 
He fell to the ground without the cane, did a somersault, and what do you know? He he jumps up and and he greeted everybody throughout the entire crowd. So, because <laughs> the entire crowd were very shocked the the way they show his appearance. So there you go. <laughs> so now, Wooly Wonka had greeted five winners inside his chocolate factory to give him a tour inside. But he has his own set of rules for everybody who enters inside the chocolate factory. Was not to touch anything or do anything, but as long as you'll be able to not get into bigger trouble. And that's what's going to lead to that uh, in the movie. So they wound up inside the chocolate factory. And which basically we get to meet the Oompa Loompas. You know, just after they, they went inside the room, which is rather small. But they went inside the an actual beautiful, wonderful room filled with... Uh, yeah, it was it was like a dream come true. It's like a wonderland, if you ask me. Yeah, a wonderland for for candy everywhere. So you get to eat all the candies. It's all made, you know, with all the flowers, the grass, and the fields everywhere. It's like wow, you wouldn't believe it. And that's where we get to hear the song "Pure Imagination." Yeah, beautifully sung by Wilder himself. So it's really cool too. And you, you just never forget that moment. But that that is until they went straight to the Chocolate River, which suddenly this is where the trouble begins. When Augustus Goop suddenly fell into the river, and that's when uh, he wants up into the tunnel, actually shoots up all the way up on the top. So, wow. <laughs> also, I forgot to mention that because they went inside the place, they also got the everlasting Godstopper because they're actually working on the latest creation that Wonka was coming up with. So each and every one of them had had got the everlasting Godstopper. So it's cool. Of course, the, the Oompa Loopas. You know, once you see those little tiny men, you know they they always come up with their own riddles, and they actually sing a puzzle. So in case like Whenever, you know, four people wants up getting in trouble, that's when they start singing the song. Oompa Loompa Doopy Dee Doo, I got a puzzle just for you. And they explain it. And boy, I gotta say, even for the Oompa Loompas, they kind of creeped me out uh, when I was a kid. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah, and, and you know what the Oompa Loompas would look like. You know, tiny little man with green hair and orange face. There you go. And they also wear uh, white uniforms. So anyway, Wonka decided to bring um, the, the entire gang inside the psychedelic boat ride. And yes, it's one of the most creepiest rides you've ever seen. And yeah, it's, it's like... <laughs> You started seeing a lot of horrific images of, of beetles and flies, and they even show a shot of of Slugworth and and all the rest. It's like imagine being inside a nightmare, <laughs> and that that scene could really creep people out. So once they entered, they wound up going inside um, all the other uh, tours of of how they started making uh, some gum and. All this other stuff, and then, of course, he, he's you know Willy Wonka is always coming up with these sarcastic remarks, and he started using, you know, poetry and all this other uh, languages that that's coming from many favorite uh, authors out there, you know, like William Shakespeare and all the rest. This time, uh, Violet gets in trouble by actually trying out the gum, which it wasn't fully tested yet. And suddenly she turns into <laughs> Violet. You're turning Violet, Violet. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that's where she starts to become more like a blueberry as, as she turns her, her face uh, 
violet. And so, of course, they have to suck the juice out with the Oompa Loompas uh, taking her in. So now we get to the factory where they went inside to make all these fizzy lifting drinks. Yeah, which that's where you know, Charlie and Grandpa Joe had gotten into trouble. Well, at least they were safe. They were about to try out the drink and suddenly they started flowing up in the air all the way on top where they were almost close enough to actually get killed from the fan. So unfortunately the only way to do that was to burp. And they went all the way down. So there you go. So they went back inside and this time they went into the, uh, the factory where they had all the golden eggs. Which apparently they, they tell you the difference between a good egg and a bad egg. So they have a machine called the Egginator where where they tell you if one egg is good then they'll send to the good machine but if, if the one egg is bad it goes all the way down and then there you go. Well, <laughs> as spoiled as Baruka is she basically wants to steal all the golden eggs and she wants everything. Yeah, because after all she is very spoiled. And she fell into the chute, where she's now <laughs> simply a bad egg. Yeah, same goes with her fodder. <laughs> there you go. The golden egg swim, of course, is basically chocolate eggs, so just so you know. So almost at the end of the tour, they went inside the Wonka Vision, the f only to find out that Mike Tullavy had wants of teleporting himself, because apparently... This was a room where they had to teleport yeah, all the messages that they put in inside the monitors so that way they'd be able to put those letters inside the chocolate bars or any other kind. Anyway, Mike suddenly got into the machine and that's where he becomes rather tiny. <laughs> and he's saying that he's, he's on TV. So, yeah, there you go. So now, at the end of the tour... Only Charlie and Grandpa Joe remain, but Wonka suddenly dismissed them, and this is where we get the, the final act, which that's what causes Rondell to be really upset about. Not only because they put in the fizzy lifting drink scene, but it's also because Wonka suddenly found out the suspicion between them, so they fought, well, they really got in trouble this time, and they fought because out of all this, even though they didn't do anything much other than just one accident, they lost. But unfortunately, Charlie suddenly gives uh, Wonka the Godstopper, and then finally he begins to reveal that he passed. He finally passed. And then he found out the true secret behind what's going on here, and now. We begin to find out that once they went inside the glass elevator, which is of course the Wonka Vader, flies out of the factory and suddenly he gets to see um, his house and, and the entire town up in the sky. And this is where Wonka suddenly reveals the secret behind um, the factory that he tells Charlie that he's now going to own his chocolate factory from him and he gets to have his family live together so now <laughs> it's all happily ever after and boy when I saw that scene after all these years it made me cry I actually did cry uh, just recently when I finally watched it after all these years and having to watch it many times, I mean, now after Wilder's death, it just seems like, wow. <laughs> That's just one sad moment that you never thought it would have. This was a good film. It really is. It, it I mean, I, I may have had a love and hate relationship with the film, but as far as the years have went, I really did enjoy it. And it shows. I mean, granted, the effects may have been dated for its time. I mean, after all, this movie was made in 1971. So special effects were quite different back then. And I know the, the art design was was spectacular. 
it's all wonderful the way they shot this and the way they created uh, the the factory and everything that they went into it's like it's like you're living in wonderland <laughs> that's what it feels like i mean i i I think it has a good comparison with uh, Alice in Wonderland in, in the mix, yet alone the, the Wizard of Oz and all the other um, fantasy uh, adventure movies. But this is a fantasy, and it works. Um, now, i got to admit, the music was pretty corny. The, the music, of course, had came from uh, writers uh, Leslie... Uh, Bocuse and Anthony Newley, you know, the actor who uh, was in the film Dr. Doolittle, you know, the original film, before he went on to waste his career in, in the Garbage Spill Kids movie. Yeah, I've got it. I do not want to forget that piece of garbage. <laughs> the less vain to say, the better. Also, this, the fact that he was originally going to be chosen to play a role in the film, but course that never happened so there you go but the idea of this movie was that uh, director Mel Stewart you know, who did this movie had offered um, to make this movie mostly because of his 10 year old daughter because she actually read the book she loved it so much that he thought why not do a film adaptation and there you go I mean despite the fact that you know, they had a lot of problems having to work with the script and the fact that they had to do some rewrites from another screenwriter, David Selsler. And that's what causes uh, Dell to feel very angry about this. And that's why he, he completely disowned the movie. But anyway. Um, it has a great cast right there. Besides Gene Wilder, I thought Jack Alverson did a great job playing Grandpa Joe. In fact, He's a very good actor that he went on to do the TV series uh, Chico and the Man. Yeah, so, <laughs> so he basically plays a whole different character from Grandpa Joe. Well, he's been doing a lot of movies uh, during his time before he was no longer with us, but there you go. Uh, Peter Ostrom is definitely the real star of Charlie, you know, even though he's a blonde, as he was written. He was definitely the perfect choice to play him at the time, and you know he, he was amazing. You could tell how how you feel about the, the character because you know having to live uh, with a poor family, and he, he almost felt like he had nothing until he finally gets something that that became a chance of a lifetime, and it really shows too. And Everybody else was good too. I mean, they're, it's a great cast, even though they were bratty. Yeah, the kids were, fortunately. But it does kind of bother me when when I was very young because the way uh, the the way the treatment is. But I got used to it over the years, and, and I can understand now, because it was also in the book too. I mean, they did have bratty kids in there, and and all the stuff that's in the movie. But I think the film could have been a lot better if it had uh, became the true focus of Ron Dell's vision of the story. So then you have a better film. But still, I give this movie a pass. Some great cinematography too um, by Arthur Abetson. Yeah, because he actually had a lot of great close-up shots and all these other good scenes here. Like when he actually started using uh, some split screens uh, whenever they put in the lyrics of the Oompa Loompas. Yeah, so beautifully designed of the characters themselves. So they really uh, show, even though they do creep me out a bit. Um, and of course the design of the, uh, the boat ride that's very psychedelic, it's scary. And of course the opening credits where they show um, a close-up of all the chocolates that's being made inside the factory. You know, like you started seeing the, the chocolate mixer, um, the cocoa beans uh, flowing all the way down, and you see a lot of those uh, chocolate uh, kisses uh, that you saw, you know, kind of like the, like the Hershey's kisses, and the chocolate bars, and all of that. It's like, oh man, you feel like you just want to have some chocolate. 
Yeah. Because I love chocolate, too. I mean, I, I always love eating chocolate. <laughs> That's the, the entire obsession of that. Because, <laughs> you know, chocolate's good. Just don't eat too much of it, because you never know what's going to happen next. <laughs> ah, whatever. But, it's a fun movie. Highly recommend it. Um, same goes with the 2005 version and the book. Because they're all good. No matter what. I mean, despite of its problems that the 1971 film really had. But... I sure owe it all to Gene Wilder because he definitely brought in his image to uh, the character because after all, the Willy Wonka Company, yeah, which is a candy company, actually brought in his image as opposed to uh, the image that, um, that was in the book. So there you go. And, yeah, I mean, given that... Um, that brown, that red brownish, uh, that, yeah, given that uh, the light wettish uh, brownish hair that he has uh, with uh, a violet uh, hat, coat, uh, suit, and he has a cane, I mean, wow, <laughs> that is Willy Wonka right there. Yeah. Well, but still, um, highly recommend the movie. Get the film on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, of course, or any other format, and or even watch it on TV, or if they're playing it everywhere. So, if you get a chance, um, watch it. But after all, I'm definitely going to miss Gene Wilder, because he was a great actor, and he'll be sadly missed. So anyway... I give Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.